Guys, I know we all love our big beefy folders like the PMP Big Boy you're looking at right now, but every once in a while, it is nice to have something in your pocket that doesn't take up as much space. So today, what we're gonna look at is five thin EDC knives that will fit the bill for whatever you're doing, but won't eat up all your pocket space. They're comfortable in slacks, comfortable in shorts, things like that, a little bit lighter. So let's turn this around and look at it right after you guys look at the logo. Guys, like I said, I love my big beefy knives as much as everyone else, but the fact is sometimes it's nice to have something that's not such a pocket hog or weighs as much. So we're gonna look at five slim EDC knives, and I think we're gonna start with this one. This is the Artisan Serious, designed by my friend Ray Laconico. Great, great knife. This is a nice, slim, easy to carry EDC knife with a little stick clip, micarta scales. It is a liner lock with a beautiful backspacer and lanyard aperture, but this is really a very nice thin EDC knife. It's one of my favorite smaller EDC knives. It's one of my favorite designs by Ray that he's done in a very long time. It's done in a front flipper and thumb stud opener. I'm not a fan of the front flippers, but I can say that I definitely can appreciate the action on this as a thumb stud. The micarta scales on this are great, easy to carry. It does have a little bit of jimping on the flipper tab. It's not aggressive jimping, but it's not just there for show. And that is 100% because that's where you're going to get up on it to flip it. I can't flip it front finger like a lot of people do. It's I, I think it's a hand size thing. It could be the nerve damage and, uh, you know, carpal tunnel that I suffer. But this is a beautifully, beautifully done micarta scale on this. Completely hidden liners except just for the lock aperture, um, the, the point where it locks up, uh, which gives it a very clean, clean appearance. Uh, so one of the, one of the top knives that I had come in over the last year or so, Artisan did a great job with Ray's design. I have always liked Ray's designs. I don't think, but one now there is one that I'm not as fond of. Uh, he has a custom that I saw at the show, but this thing is amazing. This spends a lot of time in pocket, as you can tell, cause it's dirty. This one's in S35 VN and my Carta. So like I said, that olive drab, that orange, or I'm sorry, the olive drab, that green micarta here, beautiful, it patinas up nice. This just recently got cleaned. I actually wiped it all down because I'd spilled some stuff and I didn't want to leave it on there. But yeah, really great EDC, uh, thin EDC gentleman's folder. So let's move on to the next one. This is your next one. This is the Terzuola. Bob Terzuola designed a combat tactical folder, CTF. This was done through Masterop. Now drop. I believe you can still get these. This is a flipper and thumb, not thumb stud, thumb disc operator. It can be slow rolled or it can be flipped as you saw. Reverse flick is a definite possibility with this double-sided thumb disc. Bob likes these thumb discs. I like them too. They're really good. They are removable. If you wanted to, you could replace this with something else. All of the hardware and liners are titanium done in a bronzed anno. G10 handles on this have got some really good um, micro milling and it, com it came out really attractive. This is one of my favorite style pocket clips. I know we talked about that in a video. You're looking at S35VN blade with Bob's design right here on it. These were serial uh, if you were to look at this, you're not going to find a black bladed one. I don't think I did the ceramic coating on this. Uh, the serial number on this was K390. So some people was like, wait, which is it? S S uh, S35VN or K390? That is the serial number. Beautiful fuller on this spear point blade. It comes down a little thick behind the edge, but it does take an amazing edge and it cuts really well. In hand, super, super comfortable. This is a small tactical folder. Um, the one thing I wish is that I could get in on the fuller a little better to flip it. Uh, it is possible to do it, but I have to really make sure I get in on that. But it gives it a beautiful, beautiful look. Like I said, all of that being done, the jimping on the, on the lock bar is not overly aggressive, but it does pretty good job of allowing you to access that lock bar. I'm not a fan of jumping on the lock bar like that, but the fact is it's not aggressive on this one. It doesn't hurt your hands. Nice backspacer on this done in G10 as well. Just a good, good overall look. And like I said, having done the black on it, I think it gives it a little bit more pop. So there's your second one, the Terzuola designed CTF.
This next knife is one I wouldn't have bought if Jared had not sent me the all copper one. This is the Cancept Prickle. And it's this one is done in G10 with these, uh, the, the, I, th I think it's ti titanium nitrate coating on the liners and hardware. Gives it a nice black and gold look. I am a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. That really appeals to me. This is a front flipper only, but it is one of the few ones that I don't mind because it has such a slim profile. Profile. The jimping on the spine goes up a little further than a lot of knives. It goes clear up about halfway up the blade. And you've got this nice Japanese Tanto-esque blade that comes down for as narrow as this blade is. It comes down nice and thin behind the edge. This one is in 154CM. It is designed by Max Takchuk. Takchuk, I can't pronounce it. But uh, this is a knife that I would never have purchased if Jared had not sent it to me. Action on it is great. The bearing drive, the, the bearings that this run on are super, super smooth. Action is great. Good access to the lock bar. Great, great pocket clip. Another stick type pocket clip like we saw in the last one. And then that just that contrast between the bronze or gold and black. Really, really good. The blade is a very good functional blade. And in hand, this cuts really well. Super thin, doesn't take up any space in your pocket. And compared to the copper one, this is so, so light. And it's just a very attractive knife. I love that black and gold. It really does look good. But like I said, super good access to this lock bar on this and lock up on this is superb. So it does have some little minor issues. I wish it didn't have a lanyard hole, but I talked about that in the full video. Um, so as far as comfort of carry, super comfortable in hand, comfortable in the pocket, nice jumping up on it. And it is a nice, nice little EDC gentleman's folder that could double as a tactical if you're really wanting the truth with that blade profile. You've got a very tactical... Uh, let the air out of something or someone tool. So let's go ahead and move on to the next. You guys knew that this one was probably going to make it in. This is a good, I, I bag on Benchmade, but this is a very good knife. This is the Benchmade 940. And it's an iconic knife designed by Osborne Designs. Um, and this one is got an S90V blade. Now this is not a knife you're going to find. This is one that I have definitely done a lot of work on. Um, I franken knifed this together, but the original 940 is a good, good knife. Is it stellar? No. It was one of those knives I always wanted but could never justify the price, and because this was a gift, it wound up being amazing. I have redone the ceramic and everything. Typically, these are done in an OD green with a purple backspacer. Not a fan of that, but I do have to say that Benchmade's um, hard coat anno that they do is amazing. It really does come out good and it lasts a long time. Typically these are an S30V. I have replaced mine with an S90V blade. The S90V blade on this is amazing. S90V is one of my favorite steels. So technically I have got the perfect Benchmade 940. I have everything I would want in a Benchmade 940 in this knife. These run on washers and you get an incredibly smooth action on washers. Uses the access bar lock that they call the, the access sliding bar lock, I should say. Gives you really good lockup. It's a very safe knife design because you're out of the travel of that blade and it's really fidgety. The action on it is great thumb stud operator. Comfortable in hand. The nice thing about it, it's nice and slim. It's a very small package, but you wind up with a full-size EDC where you, a lot of times some of these smaller, thinner knives do not come out that way. They are a little thick behind the edge, as you can see by that edge bevel, but for day-to-day -day use for a hard, robust day-to-day -day knife, this would fit the bill. Um, you can almost say that this falls into that tactical realm. It's got a very aggressive, forward-leaning look to it. It's comfortable and it would do really well as a secondary tool if in a pinch if you had to. But they have an iconic look to them. They're great. They've been around for years. Everyone loves the 940. Even guys that don't like Benchmade like me like the 940. So there you go. That's move on. That's that on the 940. Let's move on to the next knife. The last knife. And our last knife is a knife that just came back from the show with me. A knife I really like. And yes, it is another Laconico design. Ray did this. This is the Slayback by Monterey Bay Knives. 
I fell in love with this knife the first time I ever saw one. I talked to Sanford. He handed me one at the show for on the channel. I have to find out from him whether it has to come back because I want to know what I can and can't do with this knife. But this one is beautiful. ZDP 189 laminated blade, carbon fiber liner lock with a titanium backspacer, titanium pocket clip. I have to say of all the pocket clips that are currently on the market, this is one of my favorites. Super comfortable in hand, Eas easily one of the best pocket clips in and out of pocket, and it is attractive. It has, it looks so simple and plain, but it has got some really cool lines on it. These things are great. The ZDP 189 on this seems to just be holding up amazing. This, uh, I've cut a few things with it, uh, like I said, it's not a full ZDP 189 blade. It is a composite, almost a San Mai style with the carbon fiber handles. This is so, so light. Not only is it not necessarily as slim as some of the other knives we've seen, but the fact is though, it is very light. It You put it in your pocket and it just seems to disappear. Big, fuller in the carbon fiber, even more weight reduction. And like I said, the only weight really here is the blade and the liners because carbon fiber weighs next to nothing. The blade shape on it is amazing. You had a nice flat here on this Warrencliffe style blade that comes down, swept down. It gives it a very unique look. It's nice and swayback, as you would expect. It's a it's called the slayback, but it's based on a swayback design. So in a reverse cut like this, which this it'd be very good at, it works incredibly well. Um, if you happen to be doing some carving, if you need to to sharpen a steak or sharpen something, really really good. Just a beautiful knife. You need to cut something out way up on it. You can get in on it in a pinch grip and cut. Super good knife. I'm really happy about it. Sanford, thank you very much for sending it along. And the best part about it, look, no lanyard hole. Guys, that's it on this one. Let's turn this around, do some final thoughts, and uh, I'll send you out about on your Friday, and I will see you at 8.30 tonight so that you guys know I have officially switched the Friday Night Live time frame from 7.30 to 8.30, it's a little bit easier for me with the stuff we got going on here at the house, and it doesn't interfere with some other channels, so there's overlap, so you have time to make it so from some other channels' live feeds into mine, so that's just going to be the way forward from now on, and I'm going to look at maybe taking one of the days of the live feeds out. I'll talk about that in the live feed tonight. Guys, let's turn this around and send you out about your day. So there you go, guys. I know you guys like some of the five fast videos, so I thought I'd do one. I haven't done one. I try to do one a couple times a month, but a lot of times it winds up being a rehash. So I got a couple things out that we hadn't seen in a while and something new. And I have to tell you, this Slayback is amazing. If you haven't gotten to see one of the Monterey Bay Knives Slaybacks in ZDP 189, great, great choice. The other one I would recommend is the Pincher. They are amazing. So uh, if you haven't seen any of that, go back and watch the video I put out on, I think, Monday or Tuesday, which was uh, the California Custom Knife Show, where I talked with Sanford over there at um, at Monterey Bay Knives. So guys, that's it on this one. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the content, give it a thumbs down, but tell me why. I can't change that content if you don't tell me what you don't like. If you want to support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon. If you do hit the bell icon, make sure you've got it set for all and make sure you've got notifications turned on your device or you'll not get notified of the five videos and three live feeds that go up every week. And every once in a while, I throw an extra one in. If I have time, it's a busy schedule. If you want to support the channel financially to help me do things like going to the knife show, none of the things that we do on this channel are cheap. None of them are free. Uh, knives cost money. And for me to get stuff in and do shipping and back and forth between other content creators, it does cost money. So if you want to support the channel financially, there's a bunch of ways down below. I've got some affiliate links that have uh, discounts associated with them. Doll Strong Kitchen Knives, if you want sharpening stones and really good kitchen knives, um, I can get you 10% off your overall order. If you're really into coffee like me, coffee brand, coffee, no frills, no pandering, no politics, just coffee. Um, I can save you 5% on checkout out there on some of the best coffee I've had in a while. I'm going to order their French toast uh, here in just a few days. Um, and, but all of my affiliate links down below support the channel. They don't cost you anything at checkout. I do believe that my Atlas VPN is still saving you 80%. So $44 for a two-year subscription over at Atlas VPN. It's the one that I use. Um, other ways you can do it. I have got a membership that is tier-based. Everyone has access to the Gilded server, which is just like Discord. We all chat. We all goof off. It's a lot of fun. There's some knife trade. We do stuff on there. Um, that's where I announce movie night to the paying members. Uh, Baseline and premium tier members are 
automatically enter into a giveaway that I do pretty much monthly. I've been remiss on that. I do know uh, I haven't done a giveaway in a little while, but it's just because I've been busy. Uh, and the premium tier members have access to a sharpening tutorial series that I've built here on YouTube that you can only access if you're a premium tier member. And the final way is I have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. where you can save 10% on my merchandise or other creators' merchandise with the coupon code Crazy Sharp, capital C, capital S, all one word, Crazy Sharp, saves you 10% at checkout. And if you purchase, if you purchase my content or my, my merchandise and you send me pictures of it, I will put it in a video. Guys, I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video.